All right, it's day two of Future Planet, and the future's not just about us, it's about our pets, too. Remember in the past when Lassie would be like, roo, roo, and you couldn't figure out what Lassie was saying? Right. That was the past. Well, now dogs have more bark than their bite. Every day is Bring Your Dog to Work Day for Melody Moore Jackson. You ready to go to work? Let's go see what's going on today. Here at Georgia Tech, she and her team are working on a new computer interface. Meet Fido. Nope, not the dog. His name is Sky. Fido is his vest. It's technology that lets this pup speak to its owner. This project is significant because it's actually evolving thinking about what's possible for dogs to do to help humans. Vest connected. Hearing demo. All right, and then we can see. I heard the doorbell. I heard the alarm. We based all of our sensors on things that dogs do naturally. So uh, a tiny little puppy will come up and tug on something. So that's something that dogs retain their whole lives. Certainly dogs can bite things. They can bite and hold things. Um, they can touch things with their noses. So we've uh, taken advantage of that in designing our sensors to make sure that these are very natural interactions for dogs. The first Fido prototype established how the vest and its canine operator work together to deliver messages. Once the dog bites on it, the force corresponding to that bite is communicated to the rest of this uh, small microcontroller unit and we know that the dog has bitten it. And we have a stretch resistor that is used for the tugging sensor. These wires communicate this information to what essentially is a small computer. So the dog activates a sensor, it sends a message via Bluetooth to the Google Glass or it could send it to a cell phone or a laptop or your big screen TV. The latest version of Fido has a bite sensor and a nose motion sensor. Okay, so it's paired. And then now I can hear and see um, whichever sensor's been activated. One of the very real scenarios that we are working towards is a dog that might assist someone who is hearing impaired. Maybe a baby crying, the doorbell, or very importantly, an alarm that might sound. The way this works right now is dogs will alert by nudging their owner or, or with a paw and then they'll take them to the source of the sound. But what if the sound is a tornado siren? How does the dog take you to the source of that sound? Now, Sky puts the vest to the test. Yes, the good boy. One more time. I heard the alarm. Excellent, good boy. Sky has aced the hearing dog demo, so now it's time to bite down on a new challenge. We have a, a, a little demonstration that we call the toy discrimination. Let's see. Ooh, look at that. This is a very important thing for a um, working dog to be able to do. For example, a guide dog stops when it comes to a set of stairs, but it can't tell its owner if the stairs are up or down. Or a maybe even a bomb sniffing dog can tell you what explosive they've smelled. Is this something very, very dangerous you should stay away from? Or is it something that you can handle and, and dismantle that bomb? So I'm going to just ask him to tell me what toy I'm holding. Ready? What's this? That is the frisbee. Very good. Ready? What's this? What's this? That is the bomb. Very good. Very good. Yes. Obviously, uh, having two sensors is great, but that's that limited. What's this? That is the frisbee. Very good. One of the things we're working on right now is called a location study. So we're looking at different places on the body that dogs can reach. Melody thinks they'll eventually have a dozen or more messages on each vest. But it all depends on whether a dog can learn to use the system in the real world. We tested eight dogs in a formal study of five different sensors. Um, and we, the longest it took any of the dogs to, to learn any of the sensors was, was less than half an hour. The fastest was 27 seconds. So Sky has offered a challenge, something completely new to him. This is a red recording disc. Sky has never seen this before, so I'm going to show it to him, see if he does anything. Okay, so this proves he's not trained. When I show him this, he doesn't do anything because it's not on a cue at all. So let's use the one on the right, just arbitrarily. Sky, come here, Fleety. Good boy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first um, show the disc, say prox. Good boy. And I'm going to reward that. I'm going to take the disc away so that I'm presenting the stimulus, which is the, the disc. Watch me. Good boy. He's already got it. <laughs> One trial. This is a very smart dog. Watch me. Yes. Good boy. 
Okay, so now let's test and see if he really does know this. So I'm going to have one of his familiar objects. This is his frisbee that we, we tried before. And now I am going to have this brand new object that he just learned a few seconds ago. Ready? Okay. Good boy. Very good. That's how smart he is. What's this? Yeah, so that's the familiar one that he already knew. Good boy. Let's try that again. Ready? What's this? Yes, good boy. You notice I'm doing it all in the same hand, so he's not getting any other cue than the object. Ready? What's this? Yes. Good boy. And you see he has learned it. What's this? There are more trials ahead with different breeds of dogs, but it's clear this technology is already changing the way dogs help people. We are actually giving the dogs more capability, which greatly helps their owners and possibly makes them more independent. So it's such a win-win.